Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees. So the first week of March has passed. And I'll tell you, I wasn't expecting this cold snap that just came through. Right now we're sitting at about 25 degrees. And for this time in the morning, that's pretty warm compared to the last couple days. It's been about 12, 16, uh, I remember 11 in there. Um, so it's been kind of cold. And uh, I see that cold weather has been uh, creeping on the south. I've been watching some of the southern beekeepers on Facebook um, starting to graft and raise queens. And then all of a sudden this cold spell come through. So it, it's put a damper on all the beekeepers and uh, in a negative way. So, you know, here in Ohio, um, about this time I'm thinking, uh, well, I need to start getting pollen patties ready and uh, start getting them on the hives once we get some warm weather. And uh, those pollen patties, what they will do is provide protein and the bees will be able to start raising brood. There is a slight concern of adding the pollen patties too soon and the bees raising a bunch of brood and then another cold snap coming through. And what that does is, you know how bees don't like to leave brood. Well, they won't leave it because of the cold weather either. And that can result in the cluster separating or dividing up. And when the cold snap hits, it's not always a good outcome. It can cause uh, the colony to fall on their face and die. So you kind of got to use your own judgment on when to put these pollen patties on. Um, I kind of like to mimic nature a little bit. Um, watch your maple trees. Maple trees are about to bust open any day now. And once that happens, um, on warm days when bees are flying, they're going to be able to get pollen anyway. So if you mimic nature, I find out you're, you're probably better off instead of uh, providing pollen before the maple trees are ready. So what I want to do today is I want to take some Ultra Bee uh, dry pollen substitute and I'm going to try and make some pollen patties and I want to share how I do that with you today. So we're going to move on inside. I'm going to show you the ingredients you're going to need and how this is going to work out. So uh, let's go get to it. See how sticky and messy we can make the kitchen. My wife's going to love me. So like I mentioned, I will be using Ultra Bee. Um, as far as pollen substitutes and pollen patties or anything of that sort, um, Ultra Bee seems to have the highest and crude protein and what you can see here they are 60 percent crude protein and you can pick this up down in the video description there is a link directly to this um, one thing i want to mention is last year i used some of this so there is not exactly 10 pounds anymore so let's see if i can make this easy for you to understand like i mentioned if you have a full 10 gallon or a full 10 pound bucket this is the recipe you would want to use if you've got less, you're going to want to figure out how much you have, like I just did here. And I have 6.75 pounds, almost 7 pounds. So what I've done here is I've broken this recipe down to this. Um, this is, would be how much you would need per pound. So now I take each one of these, like my hot water, 0.65 pounds, and I times that by how much pollen sub I have. So it would be 0.65 times 6 and 3 quarter pounds. And this is what I get. So I need 4.38 pounds of water, hot water. And it's going to be like that for each one. So for the sugar, you need 1.6 pounds of sugar for every pound. So we're going to multiply that by 6 and 3 quarter pounds and I get 10.8. Um, vegetable oil, it takes uh, two cups for a 10 pound bucket but if you're making it by the pound it's two and a half tablespoons per pound i have six and three quarter pounds so it's six and three quarters times 2.5 which gives me 16.87 teaspoons that's going to be kind of tricky um the dry pollen sub we've already figured i've got 6.75 pounds um, as far as the apple cider vinegar i'm probably just going to add a couple capfuls so now to gather all of these ingredients, get them weighed out, and then we will start mixing. Give us an area to work. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my apple cider vinegar, and so I don't forget to add it, I'm just gonna add it to the vegetable oil. I'm gonna give a couple capfuls. Um, 
I've seen recipes over the last couple years where people have been adding, uh, where people are adding uh, apple cider vinegar to their uh, sugar syrup. And what the apple cider vinegar does is prolong the shelf life of the syrup. Um, if you've ever left syrup on the hive for very or for too long and the bees rejected it, um, you may have noticed the black mold spores starting to grow. This is going to prevent that. And this mixture, I'm kind of hoping it will help prolong the life of uh, the pollen patties. The first thing I'm going to do is add my dry ingredients. So I'm going to add my sugar. And we're going to mix this all by hand. You got to get in there and get messy. Get this all mixed in good. Try and break up any of them sugar balls that you fill in there. That's another good reason to mix the sugar dry and not add the water first. You can go through and break up any of them big balls of sugar. I'd also suggest that when you make this, you don't use your boxes of, or bags of rock hard sugar. Use your uh, sugar that's freshest, that's real fine and not in big chunks. That'll save you a lot of work in making these. Okay, that seems to be mixed pretty well. Now we're going to go ahead and add our water, and this is where it's going to get messy. We're going to go ahead and put in our vegetable oil as well, and our apple cider vinegar, and this is what we've got, the big old soup pot, ready to be mixed up. And it's going to get messy before it gets clean. Still pulling some dry stuff down here out of these corners. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how it's all mixed together now. Now I just gotta get it all off my hands. I don't really want to wash this down the sink. Okay, so I got my hands back nice and clean. Uh, what we're going to do now is take our spatula, throw a blob on there, like so, and you just uh, take your uh, wax paper, and fold it over top and then this is where you can kind of flatten it out now you do want to kind of get them as flat as you can because you're limited with space on top to feed these so on top of your frames between the inner cover and the top of the frames so if you have a real thick patty and you try to throw this on top of your frames without a spacer um, your inner cover isn't going to exactly seal. So to get these fairly flat is best. So I can take and cut this part off and make the rest of them a little smaller. So to show you how that works one more time, we're going to take a piece of wax paper, we're going to pull it out, 
looks like about a foot long is good. We're going to put a couple blobs over on this side. Like so. We're going to fold the paper in half. And now we're going to try and flatten it out. So there's two. So I'm just going to go to town, get all these made up, and then I'll come back and show you how many I got out of 6.75 pounds of pollen sub. Okay, so I'm down to just cleaning up the bucket here. I got just a little bit left in here. And uh, I've actually learned a little secret after making all of these. Get your mix and put it on your wax paper. Um, remember how I told you um, to get them fairly thin so they would fit on top of the frames and you wouldn't need a spacer? Well, I've found that by taking uh, just a piece of dowel rod, I'm able to flatten them out and actually get a little bit bigger area and pollen patty. So there you go. So let me move this out of the way now and we'll get a quick overview of what I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, and thirty-nine. Thirty-nine out of them. Out of six and three quarter pounds of pollen sub. Not too bad. I know uh, I'm happy and the bees will be too. So as you can see, this can be quite the task. It can be a little bit messy, but all in all, I feel it's probably a little bit cheaper um, than going and buying the patties already mixed up. Um, I don't know the cost of that right off the top of my head, but um, I believe it's somewhere around $80 to get 40 patties. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I'm just thinking that's about what it runs right now. Um, down in the video description, you're going to find a link to this 10 pound pail. And you're going to find a link through Amazon and a link through Man Lake. Um, you're going to be able to get this 10 pound pail through Man Lake for right around $33, $34 without shipping included. Um, now, if you go to Man Lake and you have a large enough order to get over $100, then you're going to get free shipping. But if this is all you're ordering, they're going to include shipping, and it's probably going to be up around the $50 or $60 price range with shipping included. If you're an Amazon Prime member, um, Amazon has the product for $54. Now, um, I realize there's quite a price hike between Amazon and Man Lake. That's nothing I have control of. That's just the way it is. So, uh, just wanted to remind you, these links are listed down below. You will also find the recipes for the 10 pound mixture and by the pound. So in case you're interested in giving this a try. Now one thing I would like to throw out is if you're getting ready, if you're wanting to throw this directly on the hives, um, you wouldn't actually have to take and smash them out um, with the wax paper and make them flat. Um, I watch a lot of the commercial beekeepers out west and what they do is they'll just take a piece of wax paper, throw it across the top of the frames, throw the big old blob of uh, pollen substitute right there on top, and then they actually use the inner cover lid to flatten it out when they put it back on. That's how they do it. Uh, it seems to work for them, so I know it would work for us too. But like I say, you would have to put it directly on the hive to do that, and that's nothing I plan to do. So um, it would be a good week or two before I get my pollen patties on. But they're behind me. Um, I've got them made, and that feels good. So hope this video has been helpful to you. Um, and if so, you'll throw me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And make sure you click on the little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching.